Hello, I'm Dr. Lisa Shanker, and I'm an Extension Assistant Professor at Utah State University based in Salt Lake County. And today I'm gonna to be talking about boundaries in your romantic relationship. You may be thinking, I know it's important to have boundaries in other relationships, but when it comes to my romantic partner, I'm not sure I really have any. If this is the case, you're in the right place. Okay, so to start off, let's explore what I mean by a boundary. Boundaries can be thought of as invisible lines that identify what behaviors are acceptable to us. Boundaries can be physical, emotional, or based on time or space. Basically, our boundaries are designed to keep us feeling safe and secure, and they're critical for maintaining a healthy, balanced relationship. So, how do you know what your boundaries should be with your partner? Most likely, you already have them. You just need some help with clarifying what they are and why you have them. So one of the best places to start is to identify what makes you feel uncomfortable during your interactions with your partner. The discomfort may be experienced as frustration, anger, or anxiety during or after an interaction. Once you notice these feelings after a specific behavior happens, it's time to pay attention to what they're telling you. Make sure to stop and reflect after one of these stressful encounters to see if you can identify what's going on. If the cause of your discomfort isn't immediately clear, try journaling or talking to a close friend to gain clarity. Pay attention to whether the interaction or behavior and related negative feelings you're experiencing are related to one of your needs, your expectations, values, or beliefs. The boundaries we need to create often connect back to one of these things. Okay, next we're going to look at some examples. So let's say that your partner wants you to ride on their motorcycle, and this is something that has always scared you. You want to say no, but you're afraid to upset them. In this case, you're disregarding your need to feel safe. All right, now here's another example. In this scenario, um, can get a little more complicated because it deals with finances. So let's say your partner suggests that the two of you go on a vacation but you know you can't afford it. It doesn't seem fiscally responsible to you, but they're really excited about it, uh, and you, you don't feel like you can tell them no. You're annoyed and frustrated. You don't want to make it into a big issue. You don't want to cause a fight. So you go on the vacation, but six months later, it happens again. This time, though, you're getting more irritated because you still haven't paid off the credit card bill from the last trip. After you make a few negative comments, maybe some passive aggressive comments that express your frustration and irritation about their irresponsibility with money, you decide it just still isn't worth putting up a fight and you give in and you go on the vacation. So where does this lead? Well, first let's look at what's happening. What is happening here to this person in this relationship? Well, we have a partner who wants to live for today. They are, they're great with spending money, even if they don't have it. You, uh, on the other hand, value fiscal responsibility. You're, you, you care about uh, your credit. You care about making sure that you have money you need to live and pay all your bills. So what's happening here is that their spending behavior is affecting you and thereby causing you discomfort, which is very reasonable. If it continues to happen, a lot of times we end up resenting our partner for their behavior. So when this happens, we might find it really hard to tell them how we feel. And it's really common trying in, to have trouble communicating and maintaining our boundaries with romantic partners because let's face it, we believe we're supposed to do whatever it takes to keep them happy. And a lot of times this is even at the expense of our own feelings, comfort, and needs. This often means that we continue to do things to please our partner in order to having conflict on, in our relationship. So next we're gonna look at some of the reasons why we tend to ignore our own discomfort when dealing with our partners. The first one is that we wanna feel like we're doing the right thing in our relationship or for our partner or giving all we can to make it work. Nobody wants to feel like they're being the stick in the mud or the one that uh, is always saying no to the other one. The next one is that we might be worried about hurting our partner's feelings. Nobody wants to be the one to hurt their feelings, make them feel bad, 
um, that, that doesn't make us feel good. So we ignore our own discomfort. We don't want to let them down, um, especially when they're very excited about something or they're, uh, it's seeming as though they're, they're really needing something from us. We don't want to let them down. Another one is that we don't want to feel selfish or guilty. This is kind of connected to the letting them down. A lot of times, uh, if we um, feel like we might let them down, we're going to have this feeling of guilt. Um, or we might feel selfish that we don't want to do the thing they want us to do. And that um, means that we continue to do the thing that we're still feeling uncomfortable about. It's often easier for us to experience discomfort than to deal with having an uncomfortable conversation or dealing with conflict with our partner. It's a lot easier to go with the flow, um, just like the person in our vacation example. So that person just, no matter how uncomfortable or um, how, how, how strongly they felt that it was not reasonable to spend money on more vacations, they couldn't bring themselves to create conflict in the relationship over it. So one of the things that I want uh, everyone to remember is that in order to get past these hangups, it's really important to try to reframe how you think about boundaries. So first, remember that boundaries are not designed to create distance between us and our partners. They are tools we can use to ensure that our relationship remains healthy for us and that it enhances our sense of well-being as opposed to harming it. As I've said, they allow us to feel safe, comfortable, and respected in our relationship. So as we think about reframing, some of the reasons why we might be afraid to share our boundaries, here are some things that you can think to yourself. So try saying and thinking these things um, and explain when you feel the need to explain why what they're doing isn't working for you. Keep these in mind. Repeat these in your, in your brain. Okay, here we go. First one, I deserve to feel respected. Really important. I deserve to have my needs met. Making sure that you this resonates with you. You need to be your own advocate. It is not my job to keep my partner happy all of the time. You have to remind yourself of that. We have to give and take. There have to be compromises in the relationship for it to work. If one is always giving into the other, there's going to end up being resentment. Next, remind yourself that if your partner truly cares about you, they would not want to cause you distress. This one is uh, getting a little bit more serious, but thinking about that um, may help you make it a little bit easier for you to go ahead and share that boundary. And then finally, and I think this is the most important one, is that m almost any caring a partner would not want you to f resent them over their behavior. So when a behavior uh, that they're doing gets to the point that you're resenting them for it, most pa most partners are not going to feel okay about that if they knew that that was the feeling that you had. So that is the reason why it's so important just to, sh to share how you're feeling and ideally sharing it when you're start when you're just in the initial phases of frustration or irritation or annoyance and not waiting until you have that full-blown resentment. That's really difficult to come back from. So when you share your boundaries with your partner, it gives you the opportunity to share your needs, expectations, and limits with them. And that allows them to change how they're behaving. It can be really difficult for one partner to accept the other's boundaries, especially when it means that how things have always been needs to change. But remember that the next time your partner wants to share their boundaries with you, it requires that you give them the same amount of acceptance that you would want from them. It's a two-way street. Also, consider that you should be grateful that they feel comfortable sharing them with you because just as it's so hard for you and you go through all the reasons why uh, you don't want to share the boundaries with them, your boundaries with them, they have the same exact feelings on their side. So the fact that they are willing and feel like it's important enough to share the boundary with you means it's something that you should pay attention to because they wouldn't have said it if it was hard to say and they wouldn't have said it if they truly didn't need to have it feel respected. So try to appreciate that uh, and, and be open to their boundaries. 
So in conclusion, uh, although, although boundaries can be difficult to identify, express and maintain, the effort that you put in to identifying and sharing them will keep your relationship healthy and balanced in the long run.